Wow, is that a strong mayor. First, I thought Mod Pie wasn't much of an episode for me to talk about, but admittedly there's more of what's offered upon watching it more. It's a bit of how I perceive some possible corrections that needed to be made on behalf of whether the viewers or myself had issues with in other episodes. In fact, there are some I'll be comparing to in which I feel this episode makes up for. In a way. There are things I feel did right compared to other episodes in which I felt it wrong. It's a little subjective to say the least, but I'm getting too ahead of myself here. As the episode begins, Pinky's working on some rock candy to prepare for the arrival of one of her sisters, Maud Pie, hence the title. The main six participate by trying them out and later getting to know Maud by the time she's present. What we see is that Maud has a strange, quirky obsession with rocks. She has a rock for a pet, she writes poems about rocks, she eats rocks, and she's pretty much more focused and speculative on rocks in general. <coughs> rock. You are a rock. Gray. You are gray. Like a rock. Which you are. Hmm. Sedimentary. Would you care to try one of Granny Smith's famous apple spice muffins? Oh, uh, that's not, um... It's crunchy. You would think that it would seem one-dimensional for her to be like that. But what's shown here in this episode is far more in-depth in a subtle way. For the most part, the episode frames it humorously. Specifically, lots of anti-jokes are shown, and while I didn't really laugh per se, I still got something out of it. I guess that's the point of what anti-humor is as well as being predictable. Or maybe I'm just overanalyzing this. Either way, it just felt like it worked. In addition to what made Mod Pie work as a character is that despite the anti-humor, she bears a nice contrast with what Pinky has. We all know how out of control Pinky gets, and seeing how much more subtle and monotone Mod is, it's an appreciative effort in exploring on the differences. Most relatively though, Mod still cares for Pinky. Even in the most disastrous scenario possible, it's shown that she's capable and will stop at nothing. So even though they're different, they still have a sisterhood connection. It's a bit of a trope that's been done before, but for the most part, it seems to work here. Getting back to the plot is on behalf of Pinky. Her goal was to connect her friends with Maud, and sadly, it doesn't go as fulfilling. The main six had no choice but to confess it to her, which is pretty broken down to her. But in a desperate attempt, she goes to make an obstacle course for everyone by their interests matched together, which in short is a disastrous result. However, the value in the final act leads me to talking about the faults that made up for the show. For starters, Pinky. In Amy's defense on behalf of Philly Vanilli, she implied that she will act without thinking and thus become an excuse as to excessively disturb Fluttershy and make her cry. Twice. Now, many have said that Pinky isn't a perfect character. While that's admittedly true, every character has flaws. However, there's a right and wrong way of portraying a character with what flaws they have. Making them unlikable when they meant to be likable in all actuality goes against what the viewers perceive them as, as both Philly Vanilli and Rainbow Falls committed this mistake. The final act in this episode demonstrated her flaws a lot better. While understandable, what she intended nonetheless was going to be disastrous. It was an act without thinking, and she admitted it. Pinkie Pie, what were you thinking? I guess I wasn't. I know how important it is to you that your friends become my friends but I just don't think it's going to happen. This was her flaw being addressed correctly instead of doing it for humor's sake. It wasn't unpleasant, it wasn't unbearable, it was relatable, and it was emotionally well-connected. In addition to the moral of the episode is that not everyone can accept being friends. On a similar topic, many viewers were upset that a friend indeed didn't address this moral when they expected it to be. To me, I didn't perceive it as that, but I won't go too far on what I thought of a friend indeed as. But I will say, however, that this episode provided the message of what the viewers wanted. Even more so, Maud willingly told her how desperate Pinky was. And despite not being connected successfully, Maud and the main six respected each other for who they were. 
and that's a better way to end it on a high note. All things considered, this has gradually become one of my favorite episodes of the season. The minor downside is, is that we don't really get to see much of Pinky's family, but we at least get to know one of her relatives for once. Even if you have to have an artistic backstory presented to suffice what the episode has to offer, then so be it. I still love the episode nevertheless. Its humor is dynamic, the character interactions is believable, and ultimately it hit the right notes to make the episode pretty satisfying for me. At first there's not much for me to talk about, but I think it's better if watched a bit more, and further speculated. By then you might dig more out of it. Or not, I could be wrong. So until next time, this is Golden Fox, and I'll catch you all in the next episode.